Hi, this is Saeed Hashimi from the ASP.NET team and today we're going to talk about some web publishing enhancements that we've made specifically around the area of web config transforms. If you're not familiar with web config transforms uh, this feature actually was released with Visual Studio 2010 and enabled you to very easily uh, transform your web config whenever you publish or package your project. You can find these transforms inside Visual Studio when you create your project. You'll have a um, web.debug and then a web.release.config. If you had any other build configurations defined within your project, it'll you, you can easily create those by saying um, add config transform here. For me it's disabled since I have both a debug and release uh, value here. So this actually was all supported in Visual Studio 2010. Uh, one of the issues or one of the, the sticky points of using web config transforms with 2010 was the fact that you couldn't actually preview these transforms. The only way to see the result was to either package your project or to publish it. When Visual Studio 2012 released, we added the ability to preview these transforms. So whenever you're on a transform, you can right click and say preview. This will show you what the original web config file looked like before. So here on the left you can see I have the debug equals true flag. And then on the right we can see that that attribute was removed. So this is what it would look like when I publish my project. These web config transforms existed before. One of the drawbacks to the approach that we took with Visual Studio 2010 is we were limited to having build configurations. So let's say I have a project that I want to publish it to, um, to a QA server. There are some scenarios where I might want to publish a debug version to those servers and then there are scenarios where I also might want to publish a release version to those. Uh, so we added another mechanism to give you the opportunity to transform your web config file and I'll show you what is that. Okay, I've already created a publish, I've already downloaded actually I should say a published settings file from Azure websites. I'll use that to create a publish profile here in Visual Studio. So on the publish web dialog, I'll go to and import my publish settings file. And then here I'm not actually going to publish this yet. I'm just going to go ahead and um, create the profile. After I create that profile, we can see that a pubxml file is created for me here. These files represent each individual profile. One of the features that we released um, that was actually in the box with, Visual, with the initial release of Visual Studio 2012 was the ability to have a profile specific transform. But one of the features that we added with this current release is the ability to right click on your pubxml file and then say add config transform. When you do this We'll create you a config transform for this particular profile. We can see the naming convention here. It's just web dot the name of the profile and then dot config. Okay. So here it created a default profile that looks very similar, or actually looks exactly like that inside um, the web dot release dot config. And here what I'll do is I'll actually add a new section here for app settings. Okay, app settings. Okay, from profile the value is some value. And then here is the XDT aspect. So I'll say I want to insert this item. And then it figures out from the uh, the hierarchy of the XML file where that should be inserted. Okay, so now let me go ahead and right click and say preview here. Actually, let me do preview transform because that's the one that I want. I don't want to actually 
preview the publish of it. I just want to preview the transform. So here we can see that debug equals true was removed. And this actually is coming from web.release.config. And then this add key from profile uh, was added. Let's take a closer look at the about how this actually works. So if I right click on the web project and select publish again, if I go to settings I can see that my build configuration is set to release for this particular profile. If I switch that to debug and save the profile, and then next time if I preview here, it actually preserves the debug equals true and we can see that it actually invokes the web.debug instead of web.release. So Visual Studio is smart enough to reach into the particular profile that's associated with that transform, figure out what build configuration it has, and then execute those for your preview experience. Let me go ahead and run this application locally. Uh, it's just a very simple application that just shows the app settings here. It just enumerates through all the app settings and shows you the value. Um, obviously, you're probably not going to want to do this particular technique in, um, in your existing websites here, but you know this is just a demo app. So we can see only the values which actually were defined in the original source web config here, these five properties. Let me pub publish this to Windows Azure and then we'll take a look at the result. Now it's publishing my website. Uh, this is just going to take a few more seconds uh, in order to actually get published here. Now it's published and it should have invoked the um, the web.debug.config as well as the the, conf the config transform for the profile itself which we can see that it has. Uh, we can see from profile here. All right, in this video, we have covered some updates that we've created for web config transforms. My name is Syed Hashimi, and please do let me know what you think about these features. Thank you.